Um, I think it's a bit of both uh, because I, I've been writing for forever, I should say. I've been writing, scribbling on notebooks uh, right from school, uh, school days and I've been blogging and writing all these small short stories. But um, I would pretty much circulate it only to my friends and family and wasn't really thinking about publishing. Uh, so from that perspective, yes, it is planned, and but not quite planned. Um, and then when I, um, and one fine day out of the blue, I thought I would write a novel. And when I finished it, a couple of my friends said, um, it's actually pretty decent, so maybe you should try publishing it. Uh, so that's how it came about. So um, from that perspective, it's a bit of an accident as well. In some sense, I couldn't have written this um, novel in any other era uh, because there is a bit of that, um, um, the anglo mysore War, the, the rockets and all of that tied into the, uh, the plot. But um, beyond that, um, I think it's a very rich uh, canvas to play with. Um, in some sense, it's one of the top what-if moments of uh, Indian history. Um, I mean, imagine you have the, the British, you have the French, and then you have this very unusual alliance of the Nizam, the uh, Malabar and Marathas and so there's a lot to play with um, in terms of um, conflicts and that's one of the reasons why I chose this period. And, uh, the novel started because I read this article about uh, Tipu Sultan and um, you know and his army and so on so yeah. It's interesting you ask that question because in some sense I started this novel as a plot driven novel, you know. So there's a plot that I thought of and then I thought, okay, I'm going to write it as a plot driven novel. Almost like a, a more of a mystery than anything else. Uh, but as I started writing it, it became more of a character driven novel. Um, and uh, that's where this whole, oh, the, the, the characters of Uma and Trevelyan started becoming more and more important than the plot itself. Um, Uma is, um, in some sense, her dilemmas are more modern. Uh, if you really think about it, she is this character who has a very um, Caucasian look. Um, you know, she has blonde hair, uh, she's fair, and she has blue eyes, but she has a very strong Indian identity. If you really think about it, there are a lot of um, first generation, second generation uh, brown children who are growing up in the US, in Europe. And they're going to face these dilemmas, and um, so uh, so so it's a little bit of that has influenced the uh, the character, um, and then it sort of took on its own life and and became more character driven. Um, there, I mean, I have drawn from uh, people I know, uh, but but I would say it's mostly uh, my imagination. I guess that my it's it's um, it, for a for a debut author like me it's inevitable there's a little bit of uh, myself in some character or maybe from the point of view of the narrator um, but not a lot <laughs> um, yeah there, but there are some some percentage I would say and uh, what that percentage is let's just <laughs> let's just leave it out of the table but but yeah there's some percentage of it. Uh, any time you, uh, it's not just in romantic love in any relationship where you have uh, very different people, um, you know, in, in put together and have to work together on something. Um, it depends on how you look at it. It could be a very enriching experience at the end of the day if you can let yourself be influenced and um, be open uh, to hear other point of view. Um, so, you know, I like to think that, um, you know, I have the maturity to let other influences. So. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I would say um, it's sort of the uh, tail wagging the dog situation. I, I love doing the research and the book was just an excuse for it. Um, I absolutely loved reading about um, about this period, um, you know, travelogues written by people who were visiting India at the time. Um, and, um, you know, and then um, modern interpretations and, and so on and so forth. So I really enjoyed reading about it. I um, I visited museums. Um, I looked at some of the um, some of the you know clothes clothes that they wore, um, some of the weaponry. Um, so it, it was very exciting. And I think overall, I would say I probably used about um, ten to 
twenty percent of what I uh, read about the period. So, so I did have to do a lot of research. I mean, it was one of the hardest parts of writing uh, this book was what to leave out, and um, I, and and reality in the in the in the war during the war, a lot of these very dramatic moments and. Um, uh, it is just impossible for me to attribute everything to my hero, so I had to cut down a lot of things and, uh, um, you know, just a lot of fun researching. I, I necess don't necessarily think when somebody says they didn't like the book, it's, um, it's criticism, uh, because sometimes a book clicks. Um, however uh, good it is, sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't click. It depends on where you are at that time, you know, uh, your own experiences, your tastes and so on. So I don't necessarily think of that as criticism. Um, and I would say I am my biggest critic. I would agonize over a sentence, I would edit it, I would rewrite it and uh, I mean I can probably find more flaws um, in the book than anybody else <laughs> or everybody else put together. So. Um, so yeah, I'm my biggest. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'm I'm working on um, on something. Um, I hope I will finish it. And Do you love cooking again? Um, I like the uh, the mystery. Um, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, mystery love story combination. But I don't know how much. Um, you know, I don't know how much of a percentage it's going to vary. So that it's going to purely depend on my state of mind as I write it, um, but yeah, it will have some elements of love story and, uh, and mystery in it. So, so for me, it's always very easy to write the first draft. Uh, I find it very easy to write the first draft. Um, but we, between first draft and the sixth draft is when I literally struggle over every sentence, every word. Um, I look at the logical flaws and, and so on and so forth. So um, for the mute anklet, I sort of finished um, fourth draft or so, and then that's when peop, you know my friends were saying you should try to um, get it printed. And uh, I, you know, somebody said you need to get agents, and I think I wrote to some 30 agents, and everybody said no, thank you. Um, so I said, look, I tried, and nobody's interested. And then uh, somebody said, no, 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 you should uh, actually send it to a publisher. So I sent it to Westland and they actually came back and said that they would like to uh, publish it. So it was fairly uh, easy for me, uh, the, uh, for, for this book. Uh, but that is also, I think, because I was not really um, thinking about publishing at that point. Um, and I think it's going to be harder for the next books for me. Um, but I, I will say that... Um, it's probably one of the best times to be a writer in India. You know, there are various options to get yourself um, published, and if not, there are self-publishing options. Um, there's a lot of help in terms of marketing. So I'm very optimistic about it on the whole for, for any writer. I, I totally love it. Um, I grew up um, in, in, in in the times when there were not a lot of libraries around. Uh, most of the libraries uh, that I had access to were school libraries or, or university libraries and so on, and, and you don't necessarily find a lot of books there. Um, so for me, it's uh, it's fantastic that I can just walk into any branch of Just Books and, and get as many books as I want. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I can like carry all these books home, and uh, I absolutely love it. I, I think it's great. Um, I guess a uh, big thank you for picking up the book and uh, and reading it and you know I hope um, they enjoyed it as much as I did.